frog fishing hands down is one of my favorite ways to catch them out there and if you understand just the basics about frog fishing to catch some big bass a lot of bass sometimes it'll probably be one of your favorite ways to to fish as well so i'm going to bring you just the frog fishing look here it's my frog this is my, my box with nothing but frogs in it uh there's a lot of uh frogs in here i i don't i'm not going to comment on whether there's any inbreeding going on in here but a lot of spro frogs in here we've got popping frogs we've got bronze eye frogs and there's all kind of other smaller and bigger frogs as well but uh for this video the the original the original is a snag proof uh probably from back in the day but once that snag proof proof got refined it was the spro bronze eye dean rojas really kind of put this thing together built it around that gamakatsu four aught which has become the gold standard in frogs um, but that was that's kind of the way it, it kind of came to be i do some some modifications to my frogs but we're gonna we're gonna show you the different things to do when to throw the original popper and original versus the popper now this is the uh bronze eye popping frog um, two very different as you can see but um, first and foremost i want to talk to you about the tackle for frog fishing frog fishing is a lot of fun when it's done right and believe it or not my hookup ratio when a frog uh, when a bass comes up and eats one of my frogs my hookup ratio i would put in the 98th percentile i mean it is very very few that actually eat that frog and take it under and when i set the hook that i don't get that fish in the boat very 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 few and it's because i've developed the whole system and and i want to kind of bring that to you today the first thing is that you make sure you need to have braided line can you throw a frog on a spinning rod yes but i would say 95 percent of all spinning rods are not strong enough not stiff enough don't have enough power to set that hook as hard as you need to you need to crank that drag down and and absolutely just pound them when they they uh eat it and you set the hook so you need to have a good braid i like 50 at least 50 pound braid sunline x plasma is my go-to on that a lot of people like power pro or whatever whatever you have confidence in that you know is not going to break 50 to 60 pound test is what you need on that braid and yes you need that strong because you catch a five or six or bigger fish he eats it and you're going to put this total wood to him you need to make sure that, that hook gets buried and you're not you're not going to play around with him i like a seven foot heavy action bait casting rod for most of my frog fishing uh, I, I can I, I, that rod's got to have a little bit of a tip to it as you can see right there maybe you can you can see that it's got a little tip to it it's heavy it's a lot of power in that seven foot rod but it's still got a little tip to it so that you can precisely cast that frog right where you want it no matter if it's a popper or the regular frog you want to be able to get that thing right into the piece of cover or right under the overhanging limb or right where wherever you want that frog to go you want to make sure you get it there you got to have a high speed bait casting reel preferably one that casts very well uh at least a seven to one eight to one something in that range die with the tula here but just need a good casting reel is, is important with that high speed that's that's kind of the the whole key so braid heavy action rod seven foot i'll go to a seven four at times a little bit longer if i'm just long casting uh, like a big open field of uh, matted vegetation or something like that i might i might go to a little longer rod but if i'm target casting it's the seven foot frog rod from cashins is what i've got any, any heavy uh, heavy action seven footer is probably going to do the trick but now back to the to the popping versus the original so the original came out first and i caught just loads and loads and loads of fish on the original frog and then a little later the popping frog came out and the popping frog does very well it um it, it has a easy it's easier to walk this bait uh, you can absolutely walk this and this is how i like that's how i like to fish the the regular but they have two distinctly different actions but with the popping frog you can also uh, bloop it or splash it however you want to you want to describe the the action of pulling it in a straight line it's going to go bloop bloop that garners totally different strikes at times 
So I'm gonna, I'm gonna show you how to walk each one of these frogs and um, how to do it. I did, I did a whole separate video on how to tweak out your frog. You can check that out, uh, the popping or the regular, you can, you can check that out as well. Um, that's on, on my YouTube channel, so you can, you can see that as well. If you haven't subscribed, obviously you should be subscribed so you can get all this good information. So uh, when, you, when you're going to tie your frog on, you wanna tie a polymer knot. There's also a video on how to tie a polymer knot on my YouTube channel. You can see that as well, but that's just a basic polymer knot. And then when you tie that knot, you do not want to cut your tag in too close you want to leave a little length on there because it's soft and it's not going to hurt anything. And then that way you, you're, you're not, going to, not going to untie any of that kind of jazz. Um, but now that you've got your frog tied on, you got your 50 pound braid at least, you want to make sure your drag is tight. So my drag is really tight. I can't, I can't pull any drag off. I can take and push my thumb against there if I don't want to dig my line in, I can take and hold my thumb down and I can't even hardly turn the handle. So that drag is really tight. Now I'm going to be ready to go out there and fish this thing. Now let's, let's go, let's stand up and I will show you how to fish the regular original bronze eye first and then we'll go back to the popper, show you the two different ways I fish that. Here we go. So we're going to just toss her out. We're in the back of this pocket, not exactly the most ideal frog area. Uh, anywhere there's overhanging limbs or, or docks up near the bank, that could be a good frog area. But I'm just going to, when I'm fishing it, I'm going to throw it out there, preferably around, you know, lily pads, uh, any type of vegetation up near the surface or on the surface or matted. Those areas are where I'm definitely going to be throwing it. But I'm going to throw that out there, let it settle, and then I'm going to start just twitching it real slow. And I'm going to twitch it on slack line. You'll get a little better look at it but that frog you can see it's just walking right back and forth and you definitely want to twitch it on slack line that is the biggest key do not twitch it on tight line don't i'm not going to reel up my slack and then twitch it because it's just going to go it's just going to jump forward so i'm going to pop that thing on slack line and it's just going to walk back and forth back and forth back and forth like a zero spook like a you know just any kind of bait like that and that's how I catch fish the majority of the time on the original original frog. Now I feel like this is better when they, they want a little more subtle of a presentation because you can you can see I'll show you in open water you can skip this thing you can skip it right up under overhangs or, or wherever you want and with that braided line you don't, you know you don't usually have many backlashes and then you can just walk that bad boy right back and forth and you can walk it back and forth sometimes you might have to pause it you know if you put it way back up in, under a dock or under overhanging limb or next to a really juicy looking little uh, matted up grass pocket you could twitch it three or four times and leave it there sometimes that is a, that is a big big deal um, but that is really how you want to you want to work that bad boy is just kind of walk it walk it along and uh, when they hit it when they hit it, you're just gonna reel down, reel up all your slack, and you're just gonna crack them as hard as you can crack them. And this is the basically the only technique that I'm gonna hit them as hard as I can hit them. Because uh, that, that frog has got uh, you know, big, big hooks and big barbs, and if you can, if you can hit, hit them hard enough to where you can get those big barbs on those gamakatsu hooks, if you can get them get them get those hooks penetrated far enough to get them into those barbs past those barbs that fish ain't coming off i mean i can tell you you can reel take a break eat a sandwich start reeling again and he's st he's still going to be on there because those barbs are stout buddy i'm telling you what they are stout so uh, that's just kind of the basics for the regular bronze eye 65 and um, that's that's how i'd fish that one now let's get down here and i will show you the popping frog i'm gonna tie that bad boy on and then I'll show you the two different ways I like to fish that one. All right, now we've got the Spro Bronze Eye Six the Popper. Uh, there's, a, there's a handful of different poppers out there. The, the poppers are just a different bait. They're easier to walk. Now I'll throw it out there the same way I threw the other one, the regular one out. And you can see it just, 
it walks easier. So if I fish it basically the same way, it's going to create a little, little more disturbance and it's going to walk and sashay a little bit more. Just a, it's just a little more, you can see it's just a little more action, a little more um, commotion going on. Sometimes that can really be the deal, just having a little more commotion. Uh, over the years, I've gained more and more and more confidence in the popping frog because not only can I walk it like I just showed you, but you can also throw it out there and make it spit and bloop. And there, there are times that that is the absolute deal. So I'm going to you know, throw it out there. And this time, I'm not going to hit it on slack. I'm going to actually reel up my slack so that I make that thing shoot in a straight line. So I'm going to reel up my slack before I hit it and I can make that thing spit if I want to. Or I can, I can keep my rod tip down and let it, let it, I can hit it on just a little bit of slack, not total slack, just a little bit of slack and I can make it bloop. It just bloops a little bit more. There's times that I've seen when that, that making it bloop and splash and kind of sit, then you can let it sit for two, three, four seconds, bloop it two or three more times. Man, there's something, it just drives them nuts. There's times when that really, really is the deal. Uh, and that's why the, the popping frog is very versatile. But the popping frog doesn't do as well in the heavier matted vegetation. That's where the original frog does much better. So it's, it's you know, you, you really have to have both of them. For me, I have to have both of them. Uh, and that's kind of the, the difference. I, I just, I'll, I'll bounce back and forth. Sometimes I'll throw one. It depends on uh, really the, the type of cover. If I've got the ability and more open water, I'm probably going to get lean towards the popping frog. If it's a little bit more matted stuff, probably going to lean more towards uh, the, the original frog. That's just, uh, this kind of experience what I've seen. Uh, but let me, uh, let me show you just one more time. Throw it out there and then you just you bloop it. You can really cause a lot of commu commotion. And I'll, sometimes I'll do two or three big blasts and then I'll let it sit for a few seconds. And then I'll give it three or four more blasts and then I'll let it sit. And man, sometimes right when you, right when you go to crank it back again, you're getting ready to crank it and then all of a sudden, boom, man, they just absolutely destroy it. Uh, it's a really, really neat deal. And then if you, if you need to cover water or if you're just trying to give them a little different action, you can definitely make that thing walk back and forth, back and forth like that. And it, it kicks up all kind of bubbles and causes all kind of commotion and it's a lot of fun. So, uh, so that's kind of the difference between the two frogs. Now, one other big question is what color frog? Because there is infinite number of frog colors. I'm going to sit back down and I'm going to go through my box and I'm going to show you how I kind of simplify my color selection of frogs. And then that'll be pretty much it. And I'll show you maybe a couple other frog variations that are pretty cool as well. All right, so you've got basically in frog colors, I've got maybe half a dozen, maybe eight colors or so here, but I've really got them broken down into about three categories. And I've got the black frog is its own category, straight black. I have, you know, I have a, it's got its own box over here. I've got, you know, a whole thing of uh, popping, black popping frogs. Black is a, a very important color for me. I really like black whenever I'm fishing in the shade. If, it's, if it seems like um, it's darker out, they like that that black frog uh it's just a silhouette i think that commotion and the darkness they don't know exactly really what it is so they, they just go up there and they they trounce it because it's something that looks like what they want to eat but they can't get a good bead on it i really like the black but then other than black the next one is is white or any kind of shad color so you've got you know some real bait fishy looking white colors uh you got you know some of this the speck colors really good looking and then you've got you know more of your um, nasty shad or, or you know clear chartreuse just i mean typical white or just real bait fishy looking colors if i'm fishing in the springtime right around that shad spawn i promise you i'm gonna have a shad colored uh frog on that they they really get keyed in on white or bait fish colors that's a big deal in in the springtime that is really when i'm going to focus on that white 
but there are a lot of times I feel like that the fish get focused on brim because brim run around and eat insects off the surface and they make all kind of commotion. They look a lot like a frog twitching around on the surface, in my opinion. Those brim, brim type fish, you know, you've got some of your brighter looking colors, which could definitely work. Uh, I think that one's called uh, Outback. And then, you know, your natural red, I think that is very much a brim color. I've caught a lot on that natural red color. Uh, and then, you know, your green pumpkin, I even pulled the legs off of that one. But, your, you know, regular green pumpkin is, is definitely a brim type color. Uh, water clears up a little bit. Might, might go to something like that, more of a brim color. Water's a little stained. That red ear can be a really good one. Uh, something, you know, those are basically my three you know, color categories. Black, brim, and shad. That's it. That's all you need to be focused on. You don't need to get too fancy with it. Uh, I really feel like putting it in the right place and giving it the right action is really the whole key on catching fish on frogs. Uh, so you don't want to get too caught up in every infinite color under the sun. You, basically, you have a black, white, and a brim colored one, and you're, you're good to go in, in the popping and the regular frogs. So basically for basically six frogs, and if you want to get too technical, you could have um, 12 frogs. You could just have two of each color in both the, both the popping and the, um, anyway, I'm going to show you two other frogs. Two other frogs real quick before I let you go because here is a little tiny frog. This is not basics, this is tiny frog. I've not caught much on this yet because it's brand new. It's a brand new. It's beautiful. It's so cute. I know that that thing is going to be a straight up pond killer. That might be a good option for you if you have a spinning rod and you don't want to go to like a whole nother different setup. That might be something for you. And then this is the popping 70 frog, a much bigger presentation because this is the regular popping frog and you can see how much bigger that is. This uses the four aught hook. This is just a three aught frog hook, but you can see it's a much bigger profile. That thing walks like crazy, a little bit bigger profile, a little bit bigger bait. You want, you know, you want to have more commotion and try to get a bigger bite. You know, you're going to one of those lakes in Texas, Lake Fork or um, someplace in Louisiana, you're trying to get one of those big bites. You might want to upsize your frog to the 70, the newer 70. There's really, uh, I think Spro is really the only one that has this bigger frog size uh, out there. So just give you some frog options. When you're getting going with your frog fishing basics, if you have any questions, be sure to drop them down there in the comments. And if you want to see any other basics videos, please drop that down there in the comments as well. Thanks for watching.